Hello everyone, it's Becca from Becca Books and Bujo, and today I'm sharing all of the books I read in the month of April. So let's just jump right in. The first book I completed in April was The Last Thing He Told Me by Laura Dave. This was a reread for me. Last time I read it was about a year ago and I reread it because I discussed it with my book club, with some of my friends, and I felt the same way about it that I did a year ago. I felt like it was very slow paced. It didn't have the mystery thriller punch that I hoped for uh, in a in a mystery thriller. And so um, this one wasn't super lovely for me. This one is about a woman named Hannah and she is married to Owen who has a daughter, Bailey. And one day Owen disappears with a short little note that says protect her. And Hannah and her stepdaughter, Bailey, have to figure out where Owen went, what was wrong and why he, uh, why he disappeared. So, it has the makings for a really good mystery thriller, but it just didn't measure up for me. Um, also, there was stuff kind of with like a mafia. I'm not so sure if um, that's what the technical term that you would use, um, but I just don't understand that aspect of it. And it just was so far removed from anything that I've ever experienced. And so I just don't think it was the right book for me at the right time. I gave it a two out of five stars. So then I read The Escape Room by Christopher Edge, and this was a middle grade novel that I just found available on um, my Libby app. And so I decided to read it because <laughs> I thought it would be short and easy. And I love escape rooms, and so I thought I would enjoy this book. This one is about Amy, uh, who her father sent her to an escape room for the day, and she is trying to escape. Uh, she meets a few other kids her age and they have to try to escape um, these rooms together. And this one took a very ugly turn. I did not like this one really at all. The suspense was good. I give it that. But the fact that everyone besides the main character dies, I don't think that's, well, maybe it's a spoiler sorry, really made it much more dark than I think it needed to be. And then there was this crazy AI twist in the end that I just was not there for. I didn't, I just didn't feel it. So I gave it a two out of five stars just because I love escape rooms and <laughs> I feel like it was kind of fun to try to escape these rooms with Amy, but the rest of it was really almost horrific and not for middle schoolers in my brain. Okay, then uh, next we have People We Meet on Vacation by Emily Henry. This one is a lot of people's favorites and so that's why I went into it with really high expectations and I was a bit disappointed. This one is about a pair of friends, Poppy and Alex, who have gone on a summer vacation together for the past 12 years, I think. And they had a falling out a couple of years ago. You don't understand what the falling out is until the very end of the book um, but we follow along the summers and then also the present day vacation that they are on um, where they're trying to reconcile and fix uh, their relationship. It was a sweet friends to enemies to lovers romance but it just wasn't like that. Oh, I love it but I wanted it to be. Yeah it was just a little bland. A little disappointing also predictable i think so sorry if i have an unpopular opinion here but i gave this one three out of five stars i know it was some people's favorite books of the year last year and i would love to have discussions with some of you below as to why this was your favorite book and maybe you could change my mind on it i guess i don't know so the next I read A Little Hope by Ethan Joella. This is one I had never heard of before until I saw it on Book of the Month. And I am so glad I got it. This one focuses on a small little town in Vermont. I think it's Vermont. Wrong, Connecticut, really close geographically. But this one focuses on a small town in Connecticut and the various lives of a few of 
its citizens. This one has so many life lessons in it and I was marking pages. I dog-eared them because I had no other way to mark them, but I have two whole pages of quotes in my book journal from this book alone. And it was about love and loss and hope and grief, hope obviously. But basically that in any situation, you have to find the little bit of hope in order to get through it. And it just was really beautifully written. I would love to know if anybody else has read this one because I haven't seen this one really anywhere around. So comment down below if you've read it and I'd love to discuss it with you. This one I gave a four and a half, I think. Yeah, four and a half out of five stars. It was so close. It's just that the ending wasn't gorgeous like I thought it was going to be. It just kind of drove off into the distance. If you catch my drift. That's literally what happens in the end of the book. Someone drives off into the distance. But so good. The first 80% of the book, it was going to be five out of five stars for me, but just the ending fell a little short. Ultimately, loved it. A Little Hope by Ethan Joella. Then, let's see, what was next? Ah, yes. I read The Bread the Devil Need by Lisa Allen Agostini. I saw this on Jenny King's channel and I agree with Jenny in that she couldn't put it down. It was just such an intriguing story and made me want to keep reading. This one is about a woman named Althea in a town in Trinidad and Tobago and she is in an abusive relationship and has been in a re an abusive relationship in some form since she was five years old and so it was a very tragic story very difficult topics and very hard to read at times this poor woman is dealing with so much trauma and it's really weighing her down in her life and she's not even realizing it and so then when someone from her past shows up in her life uh, she is forced to face these demons and come to terms with what that trauma that she faced in her childhood is doing to her present life. So this one uh, was very moving and I truly appreciated the the arc of Alethea um, about how she at the end, I don't quite want to say forgave or even accepted what happened to her, but she was able to write down what she felt in words and then let it go. And I really admire her to be able to do that because the things she went through whew, were just horrid. Anyway, very inspiring story about a strong, strong woman. Then another story about strong women. I read Hidden Figures by Margot Lee Shetterly. The subtitle is The American Dream and the Untold Story of the Black Women Mathematicians Who Helped Win the Space Race. This one, I knew kind of what I was getting into before I started reading because I had seen the movie and I think ultimately that ruined the book for me. I was, again, disappointed with this one. Unfortunately, I don't think I had a super great reading month, but this one is basically about the Black women who worked at NACA before it turned to NASA in getting man into space and then man onto the moon. But it was very dry and slow. It, I was hoping that it would read a little bit more like a story, but it was nonfiction to the core. And that was just, I guess, not what I was looking for. Yes, great story. Margot Lee Shetterly did a wonderful job telling these women's stories, but it just was too dry for me. So I gave this one a two out of five stars. Then we have Southernmost by Silas House. I literally just finished this one and it was so surprising. This is one that my husband gave me a few years ago. He went on a trip with his students, his band um, to Nashville and he picked this up for me as a little present while he was away. And I was like, oh, thanks, because I didn't think the synopsis sounded great. And then when I got 
this book on my deck of TBR for the month of April. It was actually a husband pick and he picked it for me to read. I was like, oh, great. I'll, I'll read it. Fine. I'll get through it. But I was so nicely surprised at this one. This is about a pastor in Tennessee named Asher and his wife and son. Primarily, we focus more on the father and son relationship. The main character, Asher, has somewhat of an epiphany. He grew up in the tradition that gay marriage and homosexuality was a sin and not to be accepted. And his values on that change when two men show up in his small town in Tennessee and he welcomes them into his church and gets shunned from his community, uh, leads to divorce with his wife and a broken relationship with his family. Then we also learn about the fact that he has a brother who he is estranged from because he was gay. And so when, or he is gay. And so after he gets a divorce from his wife and loses custody of his son, he decides to take this whirlwind trip uh, with his son. He kidnaps his son. I don't know if anybody's gonna read this book, but sorry, I gave it away. He kidnaps his son and tries to find his brother to mend that relationship. And this one, I really liked the religious aspect of it. I don't usually like when books are so enmeshed in religion and God, but this one had a great just undertone of religion the whole time. It was definitely present and necessary in this book uh, with the storyline, but very nicely written in there. Uh, Silas House did a good job with that. And then I think the other thing that um, just really stood out to me was the idea of the everything. Um, so every once in a while, a chapter is entitled The Everything, and we learn from the characters what the everything is. And I, I do just want to share this last line, or one of the last lines in here from the epilogue. When they lived in Key West, Justin, who is the son, thought the everything lived in the ocean. Sometimes he thought the ocean was God, but if the everything lives anywhere, it's in a river because the river moves along and touches every little thing on its way. And he thinks the everything would be quiet like a river, even still sometimes. The ocean is always moving and noisy. The sky is always changing, but rivers are always there, even when the water has moved on. You've got to find the everything wherever you are. That's what Justin believes, and that's why God is the everything, because there is God in oceans and rivers and dogs and little boys. So I just really liked that. And if you are a believer, I think you would enjoy this. And I think if you aren't, I also think you would find some merit in this book as well, um, just knowing that there's something greater than. So that was a good book. And now we are going to end the video this portion of the video because I have two days left in the month and I am really, really hoping that I can finish one more book. And so if I do, I will recap that right now. And if not, I'll come in with an outro. Okay, so I know I said either I'd be here with that I completed the book or an outro, but it's neither because I didn't complete the book, but I am 75% of the way through and it is 8 20 p.m on april 30th and i am still thinking i'm going to complete it so i'll tell you about it now this one is this tenderland where is it i don't even have it with me because i'm listening to it anyway this is i'll put a picture right here this one is this tender land by william kent kruger and i'm reading it for my friend's book club that i'm in and this one is about four teenagers, kids uh, that are vagabonds. They are canoeing down the Mississippi River and going on a crazy odyssey of a journey. It is split into parts where a significant thing happens in each part. And I really liked how that was split up. And I've read this one before. I read it a couple of years ago, but rereading it because I'm leading the discussion on it on Monday. And... So that's why I thought it was fair that I could review it for you before I actually finish it. This one is really, really good. Uh, for some reason, when I read it a couple of years ago, I gave it a four out of five stars. And I think it could be four and a half to five out of five stars. I'm really looking forward to discussing it. And I really recommend William K. Kruger to anyone who has not read him. He has a 
mystery thriller series out, but his Ordinary Grace is really, really good. And then This Tenderland is great. So if you haven't read that, I suggest it. Anyway, those are the eight books I read in the month of April. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please give it a thumbs up if you did. Subscribe if you haven't already, and we'll see you in the next one. Bye!